Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I think we're going to continue on the cargo area by doing, well, the actual cargo area bit next to the Coast Guard station. But first, some amendments. Well, some things first of all done by me, and then a few suggested by you. Firstly, I've kind of moved all of these buildings up a little bit, which has bunched them up, but that's just temporary so I can do the cargo area and then I'll give them a proper rearrange and maybe even start bedding them in with the pavement tiles. Uh, I've also finished the small sort of rainbow brick area, actually done it with proper cliffs, so that is now unbroken with the seawall and that's looking very good. Uh, and then on to your suggestions, I've added a couple of things for tying up boats next to on the edge here. I have added some more people into the inside of the Coast Guard station, so we've got a whole sort of complement of four now. Parted these two balustrade sort of pieces, so we've got actual gaps to use the railings. And in there we've got crab, weeds, and a little clamshell as well, which you kind of can't see in the shadow <laughs> of those stairs, but nonetheless it is all there. Uh, and then I have added some more stuff in here, in the way of some uh, life preservers and so on, all in a box. I probably had some more stuff in due course, but that's the first thing that came to hand. Uh, then we had the incredible controversy about the tread plate stickers, and some bright sparks decided that it would be a good suggestion to actually move the stickers using my patented hot tea technique onto dark red tiles. Then we'd have the best of both worlds, dark red steps, but with the shiny sticker on as well. So I thought I'd give that a go, even though it's a bit of work, uh, and I think it's worth it. So I really like that one. Uh, and then moving on over here, we've got a couple of ghosties inside haunting this old historic building. I don't think you can see one in there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, I can't see it on the screen, but you definitely can see that one there. They're the sort of old school ghosties. Uh, and then to kind of find them, I've added my yellowed up Shaggy that I was gifted and Scooby-Doo. And they're obviously investigating. And they haven't found anything yet because they're not running away. <laughs> uh, and then there's a map board just to explain the historical fort. I've not added any steps in or anything because I figure it's quite hard to get to because it's not really on the beaten track. Uh, and then I've added a little parrot for kind of nostalgia, just like I have on my El Dorado Fortress. So there's absolutely loads and loads of little changes there. So I'm going to give you all a collective bedoying. There we go. Right, so today's going to be a bit odd because I'm going to be kind of leaning around this corner, building up against this wall. Uh, so I'll be taking some pictures around the corner and some from the first standing hole. Um, but yeah, let's get started with, I guess, the overhead cranes. Well, it's always best starting with the biggest objects because they're always the hardest to fit in. And I've got two choices for our overhead crane. I've got this great big green one from 7939, which is the uh, yellow locomotive there. Uh, and this one's kind of static uh, in its supports, but then the sort of top bit moves left and right with a hook pulling things off a train and dumping it onto a truck. So that's very good. Uh, but then I've also got this one from uh, 600. 5, 2, which is the blue train set. Uh, and this one has the same sort of deal with that, but then it also moves kind of on rails itself and the whole gantry moves, which I figure is a lot more fun. Uh, so I think this one fits a lot better in this section, so I'll definitely do that there. That one, uh, I kind of thought this whole cargo area was going to be a bit bigger than it actually is. I think by the time I've got the yellow one in, the green one's going to be a bit over the top, uh, especially with all the other things I'm trying to fit into this area. I mean, obviously I can shorten it, and in fact, I'll probably have to to make it work, but even then, I'm not sure it's gonna fit. So I don't really want to waste it. So I'm kind of thinking if it's possible to use it straddling the same outer cargo train line about here with one pair of legs in between the tracks and maybe another one near this uh, trash can bin here, and so on. Uh, obviously there are different levels, which might make it really interesting actually, but uh, that means I will need to sort of heighten the supports on this side. Uh, but maybe I'll leave that for another day. I'll tell you what, I'll pick it up and sort of pop it in position just very roughly, uh, and then we'll put in the yellow one properly, uh, and then, well, see how it all looks I suppose. 
All right, so I told you this area was going to be getting crazy busy with not just a fortlet, not just a coast guard, but loads of cargo stuff as well. And here is my favorite overhead crane. Absolutely love that. It's the color mainly, but also the dynamism because the whole thing kind of moves quite a long distance up and down with this moving left to right and then the uh, crane hook on that so we can take things off a train and put them onto several waiting trucks. And I think that'll work really well. Now, you'll see that I've extended this from the original set with an extra stanchion, but then I've actually had to get rid of that extra stanchion because, well, I needed to incorporate it with the roof of the Coast Guard. And that's just because of where it is. But I think that makes it look more kind of realistic in a way. Maybe normally these aren't built into the roofs of things, but having similar uh, sort of uses of space overlapping to a degree makes things a lot more organic in my mind rather than having sort of one thing gap next thing gap next thing sort of thing uh, so it looks a lot more organic and I've actually added one of the Technic one by twos in at the top there you'll see just so the whole kind of matches all the other ones so I think that works quite well actually uh, and then that one is built into the seawall because I had that planned last time so yeah that looks really good i think so absolutely no problem with that one and it's got good clearance on this side uh proven by the uh, castle tunnels because it's the same sort of distance away and we can have at least well two or maybe even three trucks sort of lined up to pick something up uh, and i've added uh, a life ring there on a coast guard branded kind of setup and that matches the ones that i've got along here and on the other side of Brick Bay, there's one over there. And there's one there as well. So that's all looking good as well. Then the green one, because I definitely don't think we've got room over here for the green one. Now I've got this in place. I mean, it'd have to go on the corner pretty much. Uh, and then it'll be blocking the entrance and uh, no. So I don't think that's going to work. And that's a real shame. Uh, but the green one over here. So that's roughly how it looks. You see, I've added some kind of stilts onto the legs on this end. And don't worry about where they're sitting because I'll have to shorten the distance. So basically all the trains miss it because at the moment, probably both trains would hit it <laughs> as it currently stands. Uh, but the other side would probably come down, as I say, where that bin is. Uh, and then it could be lifting stuff from the train track onto, well, that kind of runway behind the uh, forklift truck. So... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to bed that in today, but I'd appreciate your comments on what you think. I don't think it's too bad, actually. It sort of blocks our view a little bit of the two offices behind it. But then again, you know, it makes us look even more craney over here, which I really like for a harbour. I think it should just be absolutely packed full of cranes. So, yeah, I think I quite like it, actually. I think it's worth doing some uh, train passing testing. Uh, at the very least to see if it's possible so yeah do tell me what you think of that uh, but this one is an absolute lock so I think I'm going to move on to some uh, cargo kind of racking uh, up against this wall as kind of a facade right so there's the view of what the crane would look like from this angle which looks pretty good still so I'm still happy with that suggestion and this is what we've got so far on this side with a lovely movable bit so that's nice kind of blocks our view of the coast guard but packed and stacked that's the way forward uh, so this is my first attempt at what i'm going to put against the wall because i want to kind of give the perception of further depth uh, and this is a combination of two sets of racking one two for loads of pallets of goods and they're kind of loosely based on the 60169 cargo terminal set. Uh, I have actually changed them entirely. I never bought that set, so these have kind of been pieced together. Uh, and I've even added some interesting sort of rusty roofing. Got four of those on my brick halls. Uh, they've only been in two sets, 60068 Crooks Hideout, where you get two, and 60071 Hovercraft Arrest, where you get one, both from 2015. But I think they really add to the scene look really good and in between them is the kind of train cargo office that is part of the 60052 set uh, which the whole 
yellow overhead crane came from. So all fits in quite well. It's a bit of a feast of yellow, but it will be populated by a lot of cargo. And I'm going to be using the sort of normal four by six kind of pallet, very simple uh, build for all of my cargo in this yard. It looks sort of road based sort of size as opposed to the large containers you get for shipping and they'll fit on the backs of trucks like these of course uh, and I can add all sorts of goods like some pineapples here which I had left over from my supermarket build and some bananas as well with an unwanted guest <laughs> in the way of a sort of red jungle spider who's been transported along with it somebody will get a fright there so yeah those sorts of pallets will be filled with really good stuff and fill all of those uh, and I think that looks quite good but it does occur to me that it doesn't really suggest the depth that I was going for in that, well, you can't get to anywhere behind it, can you? Because it's, it's all sort of facing forward. So another thing might be to kind of split each of these in two, kind of have them side on with a passageway in between. So it looks like the very uh, sort of ends of kind of two corridors of racking. Uh, and that might be really good. So I might try that next. And I also think that this little central kind of office looks a bit small. So I might go for a double story on that. Just the same footprint, uh, but just to make it look a bit more significant amongst all that yellow racking. But uh, yeah, it's a good start. I definitely like those roofs. Cool. All right, take two. And I've kind of split them and put them end on. And I think that kind of suggests, using our usual rules for facades, that these go on way into the distance. It's kind of the beginning of almost an outside warehouse where these are the first bays of an incredibly long kind of corridor of bays. And this, the same again. And although it is quite congested with things like this great big pole uh, kind of at the end of one of these corridors, I think that's how they end up being. And, well, it doesn't really matter too much. And they do have enough space to get one of these small forklifts down in between them. So it actually looks like they could be searching for the right pallet in amongst hundreds and hundreds. So I kind of like that. And you'll see I've changed the base plates even. So we've got more of these sort of driveway ones, uh, which are quite easy to come by on Bricklink if you're interested. So there is actually a smooth kind of bit of ground down each of those paths as well which kind of draws you off into the distance so yeah I mean it's going to be less visual for the contents themselves because all the contents are going to be facing each other rather than just on a great big display for us uh, but I do think that looks a lot better and that gap will be where that office goes back of course where I've put the black plates uh, and if you're interested these lovely panels with the great big S on are from a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles set, 79116, Big Rig Snow Getaway, where they're on the great big truck there. So, yeah, I think they're good. And I've used that uh, S logo before. Uh, I don't know if I can show you or not, but it's kind of on some of the security boards, which on this fence, he says, not being able to find one. Uh, anyway, or oh, there's one right at that end over there. So, yeah, it's kind of consistent. Drinking tea is very important when you're at work, keeps you hydrated, keeps your brain working and all the rest of it. So it's important that the uh, train representative and the cargo representative in the top floor of that office are having a nice bit of refreshment. And we've got another guy working at a desk down here. That's probably who the drivers check in with. Interesting door handle there from the Series 22 robot repair tech uh, or mech tech, whatever. Uh, but I think that looks really good nestled in between the uh, racking. Adds a bit of needed colour in amongst all of that yellow, I must say. It makes it look a lot more significant than when it was only one story. So yeah, I prefer that. And I do like those three sort of section windows. I think they look fantastic. And I only had two of them, so that's a good use for them. So maybe that building goes all the way back as well as these bits of racking. And you see I've put a few of the... Uh, pallets in there so the pineapples there and the bananas and I think it works quite well I've even added a couple of window pieces on the ones that haven't got the logo on just so we can see into them a little bit better because they were a bit of a solid grey wall otherwise 
But I think that gives the impression I was going for, actually. We've still got quite a large sort of space of white uh, above there, so I might have to mount a plane or a helicopter or something there to brighten up that area, or have, I don't know, something like an evil guy or even Robin in his little new <laughs> Green Goblin glider or something flying over there. But um, yeah, I do like that. I'd like to have it look a little more like it continues into the wall, but um, I suppose by having more activity and people sort of walking in amongst all those things, it might give that effect better when I've kind of populated it. Uh, because what I am planning to also do here is probably move the SSP van uh, and have something on that side of the road. Definitely have a kind of checkpoint with a barrier roughly where those um, stickers are, the one and two and those uh, little triangles. Uh, and then fill all of the remaining area with all sorts of cargo just kind of lying around in a very unsafe way probably but um, <laughs> just so it looks really really packed and stacked because otherwise it's just a great big area of grey concrete but yeah I do like it and it hasn't compromised too much I don't think our Coast Guard station especially not from the other direction anyway so yeah I like it actually I really like the office that little canopy over both floors with these slopes just gives it a bit more shape as well uh, and there's a Rusty's uh, sticker there on the side, which is partially concealed, which is a shame. But anyway, that's from the uh, 8486 Max team truck, if you're interested, from the Disney Cars line. But yeah, tell me what you think of that. So, still plenty to do. I've got to absolutely fill this whole area of grey chock-a-block full of stuff just like I do in the rest of my city. Absolutely packed and stacked, full of activity and life and colour <laughs> and shapes and all the rest. Uh, you must let me know what you think of this green crane over here. I kind of like it uh, from this perspective, especially. It'll need moving so it doesn't hit any of the trains. And so the stanchions on the left lower side are kind of fitting in with its surroundings. But otherwise, Pretty good, I think. It doesn't really block anything else. Uh, but this area is looking good. I'm looking forward to finishing it off. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, it'll be a Wednesday, so we'll be doing a brick haul. Uh, and then on Friday, I'm hoping to have enough time this week to get to the fairground. That'll be good. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and then next Monday, I think we'll come back here and try and finish it off for good. But it is looking very nice, if you ask me. So, until all of that, see you!